Time to talk about my dream car. It's time to talk about my Aston Martin. But it's not been so much of a dream car. Let's get out there and have a look. All right, mate. We keep preluding about you, but we are going to talk about you. Also, um, not so much of a dream. Don't get a new puppy when you just had a kitchen renovation. Um, oi, watching you. You need to sort him out, don't you? Anyway. You see guys, when I collected my Aston Martin Vantage seven months ago, closing on eight months ago, it was a big moment for me. I felt really proud. Obviously you can imagine my first real kind of, not supercar, but really, really high end sports car moving out of the Porsche Cayman 718 GTS. I loved it, Laura loved it, and we got it home. And we had a few little problems. And you know what guys, can I stay tuned in this video because this isn't gonna be a, a kind of bashing of the car. I love the car but there's a few things. I'm gonna start with the positives. Obviously I've come out now, I'm just about to go to work, just about to go to golf, and it's raining. That is not the car's fault, but 550 brake horsepower in the rain isn't very fun. Now that's my fault, I drive this as a daily car. Obviously a lot of people wouldn't drive this as a daily car, but the reason I drive it as a daily car is that it's so damn practical. It's literally a Ford Mondeo, it literally is a Ford Mondeo, with a bigger engine in it, with a nicer look, with everything that you kind of want in a car like this. I also want to show you outside of it, so I'm really hoping it stops raining fairly soon. But I can literally get my golf clubs in the back. I've done so many road trips in this car. I've done 12 and a half hours in one day in this car. Went to play the old course, met Tom Watson. This isn't the golf channel, so I'm not going to talk about that. But it was so easy. Like, literally, I pointed it up the motorway. It did 32 miles to the gallon on the motorway. Got on the country roads and just had a whale of a time in it. What a car, what a feeling, what performance. And it kind of, it really does hurt almost that it isn't quite working out as I wanted it to. The car's been back a couple of times, guys. Now, the guys at Aston Martin Leeds have been fantastic. They've been really good. Every time I ring up, there's a little issue. It's never been a massive issue. It's never let me down. It's never left me at the side of the road. But for what this car costs and for what I, I pay a month for it out of my own pocket, I sort of want it to be right. I want the little things to be right. I don't want to be having to worry if the brakes are gonna squeak when I pull up somewhere. When you pull up in this car, it's a bit of an occasion. It feels nice, it feels good. The brakes squeak horrendously when you pull up and people go, oh, look at, the, what is that? My car doesn't do that, my Corsa, Laura's 2 Series doesn't do that. That's kind of been one of the massive bugbears that we haven't seemed to be able to get right in this car, but there's more, and I'm gonna talk more positives before we get on to the negatives, because we're gonna make this a bit of a sandwich, I think, of positives and negatives. Maybe a Big Mac almost, I need another one of those. But the other thing is, the power is the looks. The car... Apologies about that, but we have just pulled up at one of my favorite filming locations. When I say how good it looks, it really does look absolutely... The keys are in there, don't lock, please. Ah, oh, thank God. Where are they here? That wouldn't be ideal. It really does look out of this world. Literally, you can put this amongst any car and you will see that it just looks outstanding. And that was one of the big reasons why I wanted this car. I wanted something that every time you walk away from it, you go, you, you just can't stop looking at it from every single angle. You can see that it's absolutely filthy just because of the amount of wear and tear that I do give it. Guys, I put 8,000 miles on this car in about eight months. That's quite a lot to put on a car. And that's what's got me thinking because it's not been absolutely perfect. Is it the right time to switch? Is it the right time to change? Is it the right time to get rid of it? There's more problems that I'm gonna tell you about in a second. But then what do you get? What looks as good as that? I'm not gonna say what looks better than that because I honestly don't think anything really comes close to looking as good as that, apart from maybe an F-Type, which would look 
very very similar to that from having these double exhausts at the back and we're going to talk about the sound in just a second for me there's one real area that kind of lets it down and it's this you see you get into the car which is quite an expensive place to be like i said i pay for this out of my own money it's never really made me feel like i want to feel this is obviously the old mercedes amg interior it's the old hi-fi system entertainment whatever you want to call it um this i mean whoever designed this as an entertainment system has clearly it needs to be on for that to turn it off the phone stopped working whoever designed this as an entertainment system has clearly never really driven a car before because this is so temperamental now as i've said it hasn't been all bad in fact it's been mostly good this car does pretty much everything like i said i've used it as a grand tour i've thrown it around some corners on country lanes when it's been good weather it has to be good weather really to do that which unfortunately we can't do today and with the v8 roaring at the back i honestly can't think or roaring at the front with the exhaust at the back i honestly don't think there's much on the road especially for the kind of price that this is that you can get that gives you the raw emotion that gives you the feel that gives you the sound that this gives you obviously you could get a mercedes 63 uh, and that would be the same engine it would sound very similar but nothing really burps or po pops or farts anything coming no nothing really sounds like this like even i'm not going to push this because it's wet and that would be silly but i don't think there's anything real in the market that makes that would make me feel this good but then also there's not much real in the market that would make me feel as silly as some of the things that's happened so moving into some of the negatives again guys like i said the guys at aston martin have been brilliant but unfortunately they've not managed to fix a few things so the brakes have always squeaked even from the first day i got it i remember getting it home saying laura come on let's go for a drive as you would do you're excited you hope laura would be excited as well and Laura almost doesn't really like driving it because she's worried something will go wrong. And I've always said it's never anything major, but we went down to a friend's wedding in Norfolk just last week. So again, put loads of miles on it. We filled the car, got my golf clubs in there. I've got loads of different bags in there and it, it was brilliant. And then we started it on the morning of the wedding and this popped up, reduced engine power, go and see a specialist. I'm like, well, I'm 600 miles away. Probably not 600 miles away. I don't really have that much of a clue what I'm talking about. Ooh. This is another thing. Right, I mean, I'm assuming you can hear that. It's wet, so I've wanted to take it out of sport mode, back into normal mode, a bit more civilized. You have to go through track mode to get back into normal mode. How ridiculous is that? Because then you're putting yourself in more danger, not quite danger because you're not gonna be driving silly, but if you wanna go back into normal mode, why would you have to cycle through track mode, which makes it louder, which makes it more responsive, which makes it more likely to kill you if you're going around a corner? That to me makes, I'm really glad that I've done that because I would have forgot to say that in this video. But the brakes never got fixed. I took it in, uh, I went to Las Vegas, as a lot of you will know, for my stag do. I don't know why I've gone this way. I need cash, but there's a cash machine over there. Uh, I'm gonna turn around. Um, I went to Las Vegas the other day for my stag do. So I went for a week and I said to the guys, Aston Mine, look, have it for a week. This is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. I know that sounds like I'm whinging, but I just thought you might as well sort them all out while we're there. I pick it up, is it sorted? So there was a rattle in the boot, that was sorted, fair enough, they diagnosed that straight away, uh, took the whatever off and fixed it, I'm not a mechanic. But the brakes, literally, as I pulled out, you can hear it now, you have to be really, really subtly hearing, but if you're outside, it's really loud. Let's try again. Mm, a little bit that time. But it is so intermittent that it makes me wonder if sometimes when I have taken it into Aston Martin, they've gone, oh, they're fine. Like, nothing wrong with them. You can just hear that. And it's not the be all and end all. It's not a massive deal, nor should it be a massive deal, but it feels like a massive deal. And for them just to say, no, because they have said, oh, we've, we've fixed it. We've buffed the pads down. It's had new pads. It's literally been in so many times for it. It really is a little bit worrying. But I'm aware that it doesn't affect the performance of the car. It doesn't make it unsafe because they've guaranteed me that, obviously, or I wouldn't have driven it away. But at what, that's another positive, by the way, I'm sorry, I keep thinking, you get so many thumbs up. A guy in a van there just giving me a thumbs up, which like, to be fair, I'm a big fan of that. And that's something that if I do move it on, I probably will miss. Um, parking space. 
this one, take this nice wide one here. I'm gonna get some cash in the rain and I'm gonna golf in the rain as well. Listen to those brakes. And there are other things, guys, which I can't really, dark, off, which I can't really remember too much and I wish I could because I don't want this video to seem like a whinge. I don't want it to seem like a moan. Oh, woe is me, this whatever price sports car isn't the dream car that I thought it was. But a lot of people warned me of it as well. Like when I got this car, a lot of people said, mm, you're really going to regret that. You're going to wish you'd have got another Porsche. You're going to wish you'd have got a Mercedes. You're going to wish you'd have got whatever. And I am enjoying it, but not to the point that I want to enjoy it. Not to the point that I should be enjoying it. This rain is really, really depressing me as well. Um, so guys, just a little kind of brief update there about the car, about what I'm feeling with it. I know Laura still wants to do more with it. I, I still want to do more with it. What do I do? I don't know. Guys, thanks for watching. This has been Off Course. Uh, golf stuff is on the other channel, remember. I'm in my golf stuff today, but I always try and diverse a little bit. Apart from that, guys, I'll see you all soon because we're going to do more and Laura's going to be on. Big news coming soon. Yeah. Bye. Also, I've just got the umbrella out of the boot so I didn't get wet when I was getting the cash. And I remember to shut the boot, you have to absolutely slam it shut. You have to force it down. And then you're like, oh, that doesn't sound really good at all. And then I had to take it in because the boot thing came loose. And you're like, because otherwise you close it and I'll put this on screen now for you. It doesn't close properly, but you can't open it again with the key and there's no button to open it. So you have to come back in the car. You have to come back in the car. You have to press that button there and then you have to go back and then you have to go back and reset it. So, really random. All in all, this sounds like a nag now, so I'm gonna stop, but, hmm.